He's a finalist in this extraordinary, extraordinary job. Um, the finest, what is it, the best job in the world. 300,000 people entered. It takes an Irish man to get there, and his name's Alan Dixon. Good morning, Alan. Thanks for coming back with us today. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, it's a great pleasure. Now, Alan, sorry about Jesse. I don't know whose fault it is, but we'll blame you. It's the best way. It gets, it's, it's my get-out. <laughs> that's, uh, that's fine. That's it's, fine. It's, it's my get-out. Now, Alan, uh, first of all, tell us all about you. You're a student with the DCU, and you are you are student of the year, I hear. Um, yeah, no, I graduated uh, DCU, Digital Media Engineering. But, um, I don't know, I just tried out all the clubs and societies and kind of kept it really social and I tr- well parties here and there but studying as well I kept up all that and managed to get student of the year with like just helping out in all the clubs and society well your mammy must have been very proud of you well, I'm sure of that <laughs> and it was your mammy who played a big part of you getting in tell us all about the best job in the world because you probably knew nothing about it until the mammy came to you and said I think you'd be perfect for this uh, <laughs> yeah she's seen a post online some ad and was like Oh, Alan, this would be amazing. I know, I know, Alan, but mammies are like, you're you're the best in the world. You'll get this job. (laughs) Every mammy in every home in Ireland was saying the same thing. So, anyway, (laughs) you applied for this job. Now... The first time we did this on my show, as we, we mentioned this quickly yesterday, but no, you know, maybe people hadn't heard it. We had there was only one job and offer at that the very first time they did this, and this offer was in a, on an island somewhere. I don't know where it's in the Pacific or somewhere where you had the most wonderful deserted island and the most wonderful job, seventy thousand pounds. What you got paid for seven months' work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, was an ideal job. But now it's broken up to four different jobs or an offer. Is that correct? There's um, there's six jobs. So I went for Outback Adventure, and then there's Wildlife uh, Caretaker, Park Ranger, Chief Funster, and uh, Alan, Lifestyle Photographer. Alan, Alan, between you and me, I don't want to bring this up right now, but Outback Adventure, spending all day looking at a kangaroo, it doesn't seem that <laughs> exciting to me, and a few wallabies and maybe an aborigine or two dancing around you, it doesn't sound very adventurous to me. But here, come here to me. That's where you're, I don't know, you're not looking at the same life. For me, it's pretty much, you can go, I don't know, kayaking down ravines, rock climbing all over the place. There's no I rivers mean, in the outback. Rock. There's no water. You, go, you can go kayaking down a ravine, but there'll be no water. There's only dust there. They don't have water. No, no, no. The, the, the Northern Territories is a pretty big place. So uh, even up in Darwin, it's all tropical. So it's just like a tropical paradise up there on the on the uh, shoreline and then inland you've got the like huge vast landscapes and the uh, the outback the desert and airs rock so it's a it's a really nice mix of both worlds it, it is not it's dusty it's full of aborigines <laughs> it's got kangaroos that will box you at night it's probably got some poisonous snakes out there you should have what were the other six give, give me the other six jobs again <laughs> what were they wildlife Wildlife Keeper, Park Ranger, uh, Chief Funster in the city, and um, Wine Taster. <laughs> wine? You, an Irish man, passed up on being a wine taster. Are you, are you, no, 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 I need was, to speak was, to you. Where's your was, mammy? I need to speak to her. There's something wrong with you there, it Alan. Was, it was food tasting. So I'm sure you got to explore Australia um, eating just all the local food. Oh. I'm sure it was good, though. But I, I don't know. I much prefer... Like the outback terrain, and it's just more so adventure sports. And there's so many like companies and adventure packages out there. I just can't wait to like try them out. Okay, so you enter the competition. Now, there's a great little twist on this. You had to put forward. You had to put forward a video. Uh, what? Tell me what the video was to, to enter. You had to put forward a video. What? Yeah, it was a 30 second video, kind of explaining why you think you're the best man for the job. So in the video, I like I com- like compose composed of um, like four months of traveling in Australia or in uh, America and Canada, and I com- like put that down to thirty seconds. Me a little story explaining that I always had a sense of adventure when I was a younger kid, and then ever since then, like I got lost on the beach, but I've always wanted to be exploring, and I just I just love traveling so much. So it it I got with that video I got down to the top twenty five. Mm-hmm. And then this is where the twist happens. It was because they wanted you to generate loads of media and publicity within your country. So the fact that from 45,000 entries, you got down to 25. 
and now you have to create like PR campaigns or get endorsements from celebrities or community. Now, tell me, tell me about this. Tell me about this. You did a, a little video. Uh, you got in touch with uh, Alki David. I want his telephone number. I need a few bob off him. He's a bi- he's a <laughs> he's a billionaire and he lives in Beverly Hills. Well, now, tell me about him. No, you're you're actually talking about a different campaign I did a year ago when I tried to invent my own dream job, but. I will tell you about that, but previous, the actual Australian thing has to do with that. Uh, I got Bear Grill support, mm-hmm. so I did a whole tweet campaign to him and uh, managed to get his support. So he said, told me, good luck, hero. And some other people, like I, I tried to target Conan O'Brien and Usain Bolt, uh, kind of all me, like the high profilers over Twitter. I want to know but about the sex doll. I'm not interested in Australia. I'm not interested in the... I want to know about the sex doll, Alan. <laughs> no, no, no. See, this was a whole campaign... I don't know. I really like trying creative, I don't know, creative approaches to meeting people or gaining people's attention somehow. Uh, kind of trying to get what I want in life, pretty much, but in a smart, productive way. So uh, I wanted, a, like, a really good dream job in uh, in America. So what I did was there's a billionaire who, I don't know, he just loves doing crazy stuff. So he put up a bet saying, I'll give anyone a million dollars if they streak in front of Obama. And uh, one guy got close, but then he actually he got put in jail. But the billionaire bailed him out anyway. So I don't know. I was thinking, why not? Why can't I use his contacts, connections, and money to make amazing viral campaigns? Because I love making videos. I love making apps and websites. So by mixing them into a creative idea, you can like generate a lot of media publicity on a shoestring just with um, with with connections alone. So. Uh, the actual campaign was, um, I took the billionaire's enemy. Like, okay, imagine, imagine your enemy, someone you really just don't like. And, uh, the billionaire's wife at the time was putting on an internet model competition. Mm-hmm. So I took the face of the enemy, which is, uh, Summon a Redstone from Viacom, and I stuck that face on a blow up doll, and I set X the doll to his house in Beverly Hills entering the doll into the internet's next top model competition. So I uh, went along with a letter and an application form and what I was wanting. Have you ever gone to a psychiatrist? Have you ever been sent to a psychiatrist at all there, Alan? (laughs) (laughs) I just thought it was a smart way to get his attention. It would definitely leave a mark in some way. But I I documented the whole thing on YouTube and I put it up. And, um, yeah, and then I started a Twitter campaign for him to watch that video. And I got I flooded his mention feed with my friends and friends' friends. It kind of got a little backing and support from people here in Ireland. Mm. And uh, he made a video response. And then I needed to prove how uh, how I could help his company. And somehow I managed to get into the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Dublin. Uh, I wasn't supposed to be in it, but I kind of snuck in. I don't know. But um, I walked down <laughs> O'Connell Street with a sign saying, Hire me, Alki dressed as a leprechaun <laughs> with his logos on it. And uh, I got to meet him in Beverly Hills, which is pretty cool. But um, Did he hire you? <laughs> that's, where it, that's where it all fell apart. Oh, uh, no, he didn't. He didn't because, to be honest, I don't know, he just seemed, you know when someone, you know when you talk to someone and you just connect straight away, you're like, oh, you should totally help me out. You do websites and video. I'm trying to run this company. Maybe we can work something on the campaign. Mm. But it just didn't work. And um, there's no point in trying to convince someone that you're really good for them. He just couldn't see it. But either way, I got to meet up with him in Beverly Hills. I got to, like, I walked in and it was um, Mike, the situation in Miss California. Well, and sounds I good. Interrupt, I don't know what it's... I interrupted. But a life experience anyway. So I got to there was another America. young, there was another young, I think he was an engineering student I had on my show not so long ago, that he spent his last 500 pounds on a big billboard saying, please employ me. I've, I've, you know, I've, I've applied to so many companies and no one's employed me. And he got the hundreds of replies and got, you know, lots of job offers. I honestly think, yeah, it's, it's kind of like if you're looking for a job, and you've got, like, got skills and got kind of creativity, mm. just make something original, different, something nobody's seen before, and you'll get hired just by notice. Now, um, you just, you yeah. really don't need a CV these days. Now, listen to me. Uh, a friend of mine just l- uh, launched an app, and he's trying to get it. Uh, the app is a music app, and he's trying to get noticed everywhere. Maybe he should give you a call, and you can help him out with some <laughs> ideas. Now, let's, yeah. let's, t- let's talk uh, to you about the competition. What's the next step now in the competition? 
so the next step is I'm actually um, I've actually been flown to Australia now on the 10th of June to probably go through like a kind of fear factor style challenges and interviews against my other two competitors and um, it'll then whittle down to a, fi- a final of one, like like kind of like a Survivor Series. I don't know. I, I don't know what challenges they're going to give me. Like maybe eating bugs or something. Or well, you know, being it, able to survive. Sure, but but walk in instead of bringing a dog with you. Bring a kangaroo on a lead. That, no, it might it might work that to say that you love kangaroos. <laughs> and 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 here's something to be too impressed. And just say to them, just when you're sitting outside, just say, do you know what I'm listening to on my I, my iPhone? Have a listen. You know, if they say. You say, but that's your didgeridoo. You're and, really good at playing the didgeridoo. Then. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm very good at blowing. I'm a good blower. <laughs> that's me. So look, we'll, we'll play the didgeridoo. So I, I'm going to back you now as my man. I won't give you anything. I'm just going to say you're my man. And so are you going to have your phone? So how do we get in contact with you when we want to bring you on? See how you're doing. Yeah, no. So people can actually stay in touch and follow along with the campaign. No, I so want to speak Twitter to you. Is... I want to speak to you live <laughs> when I'm out there. Of course. Yeah, no, I'll have my phone with me as well, so you can probably get me on this number. But even people following on Twitter, it's at Daxon, D-A-X-O-N. And uh, the campaign online is DixonDownUnder.com, so people can follow along there. Sounds great. And what about a girlfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? Do you have a boyfriend? I don't know what you blow, which way you blow. (laughs) No, I'm not. I don't swing that way. Uh, I'm currently single. So, yes, so you're not leaving you're anyone not. behind. You're not. You're not leaving anyone behind. Uh, and what about the mammy? Is she going to go with you? Who's going to go do your laundry? Who's going to look after you? Well, I can do my own laundry. I've uh, I've mastered that skill. Um, I'm definitely the outback. I think I can do my laundry. Um, I'm, I might bring my mum. I don't know. She's I think it'd be good. I think my dad wants to pack his bag and come say hi for a while. What's, yeah. yeah. What's your dad do? What, what's What's your family business there? What What, what are they in? Uh, well, no, my mum's um, a remedial teacher, so she's she was in school, and I rang her, so she was actually delighted. Luckily, she answered the phone, yeah, which is uh, great. Yeah, I know. And, uh, what, what, what my you? dad's actually re- retired at the moment, so he's free uh, to uh, to uh, do- when he's done his fishing, he'll uh, pack his bags and come over to. Uh, oh, yeah, after the fishing, well, you're after the fishing first, absolutely. Well, look, it's good to have you now. We're going to adopt you, so we're going to keep in touch with you. You're off on the 10th of June. We're not going to speak to you before the 10th of June, um, but we might speak to you then about a week after you arrive to see how you're getting on. Um, we won't speak. If you lose, we're not interested in you at all. We're never going to speak to you again. <laughs> not, we don't want to know losers, do we? No. Well, we uh, want you to win. But I, I'm thinking I'm going to bring the proud Irishness to Australia, join the rest of them, and uh, I'm in it to win it, so I'm pushing for it. Oh, my God, what's that? You should see the studio is full of Aborigines with signs say, don't come. Oh, my God. There you are. <laughs> uh, I know. I'll be fine. You'll be fine. Thanks for the support, anyway. I really appreciate it. Well, it's great to have you on my show, and don't forget to Twitter on that you've been on the Bowling Show, and so you let everybody, all your friends know. Speak to you. And this, this is repeated tonight, if you want to hear it, at your time. It's going to be uh, 12.30 our time, so it'll be um, uh, 11.30 your time. You can listen to it on www.italkfm.com, and you can listen live, and you can hear yourself and get embarrassed at uh, uh, 11.30 your time this evening. Awesome. Thank you so much. Good to speak to you. Speak later. Bye. Cheers. Good Have luck. Bye bye. 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 She's not the sort of music you play and tell everybody in the audience uh, follow us. So there's I'm sure about that. Anyway, um, that was him. He's a nice kid, isn't he? And I'm sure he'll do well. Alan Dixon's his name. Alan Dixon. And nice to have him on the show. And you can follow him on Twitter or on his Facebook. We'll keep you up to date as what's happening. As he is a nice guy, and we want to make sure he does well.